Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, this is a rare video. We're going to talk about the comic book industry. Uh-huh. Uh, we're going to talk about the comic book industry, and we're going to talk about how more and more people in the comic book industry are saying things that YouTubers have no. been saying for years. Let me rephrase this. More and more people in the comic book industry are suddenly being comics gate. <laughs> I know, right? If if Gail Simone, who is a very vocal critic of Comicsgate, said the things she's saying now five years ago, they would have been, watch yourself, Gail. Well, watch that's what it. happened. I mean, I'm saying that's from people that this happened to. Like, we didn't do anything. We just, well, I was doing, we, it was, it was Neon had just made up an article saying, oh, wow, this is bad. Like, you know, Marvel numbers are down and Disney might outsource it and what's going on? And all it took was that for all our people, our friends and people to like stop following us. Yep. We're like, what is going on? What are your comics gate? What the hell is comics gate? And everything else. <laughs> I didn't even know what the and hell was going on with it. Yeah. And it's like, and all you did was point out the obvious. And then that that's not there by like, you know, oh look, it's the it what was it, the the cheese? What was it, the the playground cheese and Oh, the stinky, the stinky cheese. Whatever the cheese was in, in the, the Diary cheese of a touch. Kid. The cheese, cheese touch, yeah. yeah it was, like, oh my yeah. God, you have, you, you have you common sense. It's a cheese <sighs> touch. And now everybody runs away from you. And now, now that it's safe because of, you know, everybody else who, who did say stuff about it, now they're going to say, hey, you know what? These things are going on and it's a problem. Yeah, you're five years too late. I'll right. fuck you. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about this because we are seeing this a lot. I am seeing this... In the last six months, I've seen three or four industry professionals. Because it's affecting them now. Yes, but, but, but we're big time critics of YouTubers, or YouTube critics, critics of critics, uh, who basically are like, don't believe anything they say because it's all wrong because it's coming from a place of bigotry and misogyny. Right, except they're gonna eat them last. And now yes. that it's coming for them, yes. now they're like, oh, well, this is bad, guys. This is bad, oh, oh no. Sit and spin, bitch. <laughs> You have a little bit of a personal, uh, personal. I do. We'll talk about that after we we'll, do our we'll talk intro. about it. Uh, I don't know her. Uh, she's got. I didn't blocked, know her either, but you didn't know her either, and she blocked anyway, you. Anyway, so, well, before that, but go ahead. Let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Not many woohoo's going on in the mainstream comic book industry now. No. Things are are crumbling. A lot of boohoo's. A lot of boohoo's. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess most. Yeah, I, I forget exactly. I think it was about. I was saying it made a comment about uh, redheads. Yes, which you about, are. Yes, which I also am a redhead. About you know how they keep race swapping redheads, and I forget what exact comment was about. But I said something, and she was trying to be a bitch about it, and then everybody ratioed her like big time. And then she deleted the comment. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm blocked. I don't know why I'm blocked. I don't know if I'm still blocked. I never checked. Uh, I don't have a problem. I mean, prior to her interaction with you, I didn't have a problem with her. Uh, I thought she was... Oh, I hand it was all handled between me and everybody else. We handled it well. <laughs> so, Thank you, everyone. Anyway. Uh, yes, but, uh, you know, so the, for those of you who don't know, because people are like, who the hell is Gail Simone? She is a comic book writer. She's been writing comics for professionally probably for about 15 Remember when she tried to YouTube and she failed miserably? She, she did like try to YouTube, yeah. So I think I think she knows, I mean, look, uh, she is of a certain age, and I think anybody over the age of, of 35 working in comics now, uh, they remember better times. And they're like, yeah, this isn't as good. as It never used to be this poverty stricken. Nope. But you did it to yourselves and you supported it and cheered when it happened. Like the choices are being made because you got people that work cheap that just wanted to use it as a, as a platform and that y'all, y'all towed the line. Y'all kept your mouth shut. So you kept thinking you were going to keep yours. You created this problem. So lots of uh, professionals have been coming out and saying what they really think. Now, Mark Miller, who's always been, he's never been one to hold back. Uh, he got in trouble for going on Wes's show on Thinking but, Critical. But Thinking Critical isn't one that... No, Thinking Critical is not a comic Oh, it's Comics Gate adjacent. Oh, yeah. So because, we're supposedly too, yeah, even yeah. though we keep saying Yeah, we're, we're, we're supposedly Comics Gate adjacent. Somehow, we're I've never, also Gamergate, even though we weren't even doing We weren't even around for Gamergate. We, we are basically... We are on Clownfish Island. We're on our own little island. My friend told my friend and his cousin's friend's dog's friend's fleas friend's cat said... That they were there for Gamergate because I saw it. We I actually, some guy tried to say that. Like, you were there for Gamergate. I was there. I'm like, we weren't there. You were we full saw, of shit. We saw a guy in wearing a white hood that had a clownfish embroidered on it. <laughs> we know it's you, Kaneen. <laughs> we knew it was you. Uh, yeah, so 
it doesn't matter. I mean, if you if you are critical at all of the mainstream comic book industry, you are. You just asked a simple question. Comics That's gate. All you did. Comics gate adjacent. <laughs> comics get whatever. But the weird thing is, is this article is actually put up. Uh, John Delrose put up on Bounding in the Comics, and uh, he actually had Dan DeDio, Dan DeDio, who was in charge of DC Comics for years, mm-hmm. and recently got gone. It's only been a couple of years since he got gone, but he was in charge of DC Comics during the last like really good sales years that they had. And because of that, uh, he has effectively been blacklisted. The guy who used to hire all of these morons yeah. is now blacklisted. Well, I don't think he shouldn't have hired those morons. He shouldn't have hired them. Cause I mean, you, at the end of the day, who's the one that put these people in there in the first yeah. place and that caused your demise. Yeah, dude. So everybody started, you know, the usual suspects all started coming out of the woodwork and they started attacking Dan DiDio. Again, this is the guy who gave them jobs. Now there were people who had access to grind. Mark Wade apparently was blacklisted from DC. My understanding as to why Mark Wade was blacklisted or potentially blacklisted from DC was that he was, uh, he had a short temper and he was potentially violent. And that's why he wasn't allowed to work at DC because he was just like, the dude, the, there's like a, a long history of him just being completely unhinged and they didn't want to deal with it. But uh, I digress. Gail Simone wrote, uh, let's see, Batgirl, Birds of Prey, a uh, bunch of like Batman adjacent. T- I don't know if she wrote the main Batman title or not. And this isn't the, I mean, this isn't the first time we had Dan DiDio getting slammed. We had uh, Mark Miller getting slammed again for saying things that YouTubers have been saying for years. We've had um, Eric Larson. Eric Larson from Image, who is very, very progressive, mm-hmm. right? He was on John Del Rosa's show, and he got crap for that too. And these are all people that were quote unquote anti comics gate or whatever, and now they're saying the same things because it's some common sense. It's common sense. Just because you don't, just because you don't like the message, doesn't mean you shoot the messenger. And it's I think what, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not true. Right. And I think what happened was they were trying so hard to prove these people wrong. And Heidi McDonald is still doing it. She's still like, she gets these dismal numbers from the comic book industry. And she, she puts this most like positive, wonderful spin on like, well, contrary to what those chuds think and their certain narrative, I'm like, you can't be this stupid. Please tell me you're not this stupid. It's all a pile of shit, but at least doesn't smell as bad as we thought it would. Yeah. Right. It's like, God, she reminds me of uh, what from the Hunger Games, uh, Effie, the whole like everything's I don't fantastic. Know, I it. Like, we're going to announce all these kids getting killed or whatever, but everything's just great. It's just great. Um, but yeah, she said that, uh, th- again, common sense shit. Five, five reasons or five um, uh, critiques of the mainstream comic book industry. She said, number one, uh, not making sure veteran pros have work if they want it. Yeah. Because one of the biggest complaints right now is the decline in quality. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the reason a lot of the veteran pros are not being invited to work on projects is, well, maybe they have problematic political views. Maybe, yeah, or maybe they because they cost more than the cheap they ass cost ones that more. you hired. They don't have the right check boxes. They are, they're not on. The, they're on the list of do not hire because yeah, for some reason they are the dude or they yeah vote a certain way or whatever. Didn't you see his Facebook post from eight years ago? Didn't you think that maybe he was even remotely he was maybe thinking about voting for Trump? He said it like Cobra once. I mean, Larry Hama, for God's sake, Larry Hama supposedly had been blacklisted from DC Comics too. Speaking of which, but, but, um, yeah, so I think, I think that's a big thing. And I look, I've been to conventions. It's very sad when you have incredibly talented, experienced comic book professionals, basically just peddling their wares in artist alley because nobody's hiring them on books anymore. And, and a lot of the reasons they're hiring capable. them is for, uh, th- sexism, things, racism, yeah. things, things like that. Not because they are just because people are being biased against them because they are, you know, man, or, you know, they're not, they don't vote the way they want them to, or, you know, whatever. I think, I think they're a, white. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I think there was such a push to push out certain kinds of people and look from where I'm sitting and I, I might've, Maybe I didn't see things the way that I should have seen them. But from where I'm sitting, it was Gail Simone and, and people like her that were all like, you know, comics, too male, too white, too whatever. Let's get some diversity in there. So then what happened was they basically actively started to push out people from the industry. Yeah, we know there's whole groups that, you know, dedicated to keeping lists. Right. And it wasn't, it wasn't additive. It wasn't like, hey, let's put some more 
uh, seats at the table for people. And I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent to have books that sell to do that. Well, that's just it. So now we've got this. And I think what happened was, is a lot of these editors, these publishers start hiring a lot of younger, diverse people and they work cheaper. And now it's like, oh, you know, we used to pay two or $300 a page. Now we can get away with paying 75 bucks a page because this person that worked in web comics will, you know, we'll work take for it. that. We'll take it. Or a Tumblr artist. Uh, they say on here though, ageism plays into it too. And I think that's true. Yeah, I think that's true. But the, the thing is, is that who do you think is reading your comic books right now? I mean, if they're naive enough to think that 10 year old, 12 year old kids are picking up their, their 32 page floppy comics, which by the way, cost four ninety nine on average now. That's nuts. For freaking con they used to they cost seventy five cents when I started reading comics and they went up to a buck. But that was still affordable, right? Mm -hmm. Freaking four ninety nine for a thirty two page comic. Or you can buy manga for ten bucks, twelve bucks. Right. Get a whole book, yeah. Get a whole lot more book. Um, so yeah, that's what kids are reading. You, you already lost that audience. So ageism should not be a thing. You should be going back to what sold to those people when they were younger. Yeah. And but that, they're, yeah. But they're chasing everybody off. They're chasing everybody um, off. Not respecting the stories that came before or the characters. How many characters have, have suddenly decided turned... they were LGBTQ plus. Yeah. With no indication. Like, right. look, if, if, if there were an indicator that they were like in the case of North star, there was a buildup to that mm -hmm. and it was obvious, but you don't just have like Bobby Drake one day who's exclusively dated women and a lot of women and just been like, you know what? Yeah, I think I'm gay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm gay. And Tim Drake. Yeah. That's my best friend. We've been, we're bros. We've been hanging out forever, but you know what? I really would like to bang that guy. Mm -hmm. Right. I like it doesn't. Uh, I mean, you're it's my not best even a, friend. We hang out every day and I would like to bang that guy, but that's, you know, you're talking about me, right? Just making sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. We <laughs> hang out every day, but I'd like to bang that guy. <sighs> anyway. Um, no, but like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, look, I'm not against LGBTQ characters in comics by any stretch of the imagination. That being said, you don't take characters that have never shown any inclination at all to and, and basically just change their entire personality. Well, then they race swap characters, they the race gender swap bend characters. We got, yeah, we got to get, we got to push, uh, push established characters out of the way to bring in these new characters at the height, like Marvel, especially at the height of the Avengers popularity. You had a golden opportunity to sell a shit ton of comic books. Mm -hmm. And that was when you decided yeah, let's just switch everybody out. Yeah. Let's get rid of Tony Stark and Steve Rogers and, you know, let's just... So then people go to the comic shop after watching Avengers movies in the theater and they're like, who the hell are these people? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't... Again, it's just so stupid. And you want to talk like Disney's all about brand synergy. I can't believe there wasn't somebody at Disney being like, whatever you do, make sure that the characters and the, the curtains match the drapes. Make sure the no. character... What they're probably doing was they're probably saying, "Hey, these guys are getting old. We gotta make, we gotta switch them out in the comics first to get lead people into them, switching them." Oh, in the I, I know that because they already yeah. had you know uh, contracts with these guys, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Okay, what are we gonna do after the contract runs out?" So we gotta have replacement. Do we recast so them? Disney was or probably behind it, honestly. They might have been. They might have been like, "Yeah, let's get people used to these new characters, so then we can." And look, it's it's working out so well in Phase Four and Phase Five, isn't it? We might get rid of all those toxic male audience people that complain about all our movies and don't like Captain Marvel, and we'll get the new young hit people in. Let's give them the characters they want, except they don't read comics and they don't buy your damn books. And even when you put them in the shows, they didn't like them then either. You mean let's get rid of ninety percent of our audience, right? Right. You know, because they're right. chuds for new. Audiences that we want that but don't want us. Uh, not allowing artists room to contribute. That actually is that that's more of a recent thing because it used to be that the artists pretty much dictated the comics. Even Marvel, the writing style Marvel was the writer would give the artist a an outline of what was going to happen. The artist would draw it to the best of their ability, and then the writer would go back. This is Marvel style. Then the writer would go back and add the dialogue in mm -hmm. based on how the artist broke it down. But back then, the artists were a lot more competent. You know, they but, usually work together a lot, so they kind of knew what they were thinking. Right. So kind of like right. what you and I do, because we know what we are thinking. You yeah, and there, there are times that I'm like, hey, this would work better if we do this or that or mm -hmm. whatever. And um, No, but usually what he would do is he'd just change it and not tell me. <laughs> That usually, that didn't go well. Well, that's anyway. kind of what happened with Dark Phoenix. Like, I, I apparently it wasn't in the script that she blew up the planet or whatever. She destroyed the planet. Like John Byrne just kind of 
put that in there. Oh, and well, I was like, oh, but that became a big plot point, isn't it? That became a big plot point. Oh, geez, that's a big thing to change. So, anyway, anyway, um, price point, yeah, again, oh, shit, five four, dollars, six dollars, five dollars for thirty-two page comic. Are you smoking crack? And eight more pages cost you a buck. Yeah, people are like, mm-hmm. uh, lack of distribution options. Well, there's that, more distribution options now than before. They don't like the distribution options. But that doesn't available. mean that they aren't available. There are, right. I, I would argue the distribution for comics is much more prevalent now than it was even before the pandemic. Well, yeah, because a lot of people pivoted. Well, we had other distributors pop up for comic shops, but a lot of people pivoted to direct to consumer mm-hmm. via crowdfunding or selling through their site or whatever. Or Amazon. This, or Amazon. And I think this pisses off some comic book pros because some of them basically they need the system to sell their work. I'm not saying Gail Simone will wear the, I don't know, but she's done crowdfunders. I guess she's done. Okay. But what I'm saying is like a lot of the comic book pros that complain when they go out to crowdfunding, they don't do that well. So then what they do is they spend their time trying to tear down other people that mm-hmm. do well in crowdfunding. Well, yeah. Instead you of know, like, what are they doing right so I can, you know, do that too? Nope. Exactly. That that should be the attitude with anything. If somebody else is successful at business, even if you absolutely hate them, even if you hate their product or whatever, you can look at their success and be like, okay, what can I learn from this to better my own situation? Mm-hmm. You don't like the comics gate comics. You think they're too right wing or whatever. You don't have to make comics like them, but you can look at like, okay, what are they doing? Oh, they're connecting with their audience personally. They're doing YouTube. Um, they're trying to figure out what the consumer wants first. You know, what, what, what is the mainstream not giving them? What can I give them? Oh, maybe they would like a story that takes place, you know, kind of like a, an eighties or nineties Marvel type story. Maybe if I do something like that and I try to build a, a personal connection with them, I'll get somewhere. Instead of just going on Twitter and pissing everybody off. Instead of just going on Twitter Calling and pissing them, people off. Or, you, I don't, they're not the audience I want. Don't read my stuff then. <laughs> but and instead, then why would I want to read my stuff? Yeah. And then what happens is they go to crowdfunding. They're like, oh, let's do my, you know, my fanfic or whatever. My, mm-hmm. like what I want to do. And that's fine. You're allowed to do that. But, you know, again, if, if you are in the entertainment business, your job primarily is to entertain your audience. You know, and uh, if you want to work through your personal issues or whatever, you can hire a therapist. <laughs> work in a writer's room. <laughs> work in a writer's room or something. But yeah, there are lots of options and there are people that are very, very successful now. Um, but I just think that like, this is just so freaking ridiculous. Oh yeah, they actually bring this up too. You know, hey Bobby, you're gay. Yeah, you're gay. exactly. You're gay. Says, I didn't even read this article and that was my, the first things I thought of. Says the woman that can control people's minds, you're gay. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> But it's just not, it's not working. It's not working for these people. So what's going to happen is, and it's just going to be like web comics. We've, we've seen this before. They, they slam on people that work outside the system. They did this with web comics people. They did it with the early adopters of crowdfunding. And then in five to six years, they start doing it too. But then they want a memory hole. Oh, well they, and then it's them. okay when they do it. Like they should be, they should be applauded for their bravery. Yeah, well, I mean, speaking of these, speaking of the detractors and speaking of like Mark Wade, like Mark Wade did Throwbent, which failed catastrophically, by the we way. We tried to help him with We that, tried to help him But he wouldn't that. listen. No, I don't think it was him. I think it was business partner. It was his listen. partner, I think, was the problem. But but anyway, like, and everybody's like, oh my God, web comics are finally legitimized because a guy like Mark Wade's going to no, do it. No, what they did was they were to come in and take it over, which is yes. what happened on Webtoons. Yes. Uh, they had the money to do it. Whatever. So I think what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of these pros that have spent the last five or six years attacking YouTubers and, and, you know, uh, trying to get people on social media to go attack and false flag YouTubers all of a sudden turn around being like, you know what? It's a great idea because it's my idea now. Yeah. These so are my it's ideas. completely acceptable because I said it. It's completely acceptable. And uh, uh, I to that, you, I say fuck you. Pretty much. Like if you were, yeah, I, I would say don't forget. Mm-mm. You know, and uh, a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, if they're in a position of power, you don't hire them either because they were they were trying to get other people fired. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of these people in this group were trying to get a lot of people fired. And they're part of groups that, yeah, were the back end whisper networks and things trying <laughs> the to. The ass of end of comics. Right. They were hiding in the shadows, the butthole comics, if you will. The anus. To, to try, to, to, try to, uh, to, to take people down. The devil's anus. All right. Are we going to? Gonna wrap yes. it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.